Oh, mine never talks like that. Okay. All right. You ready? Let's go. Hey, everybody. It's 19 Cats and Counting. We have been wanting to talk to a cat sitter for so long. You know, cats are a special breed. It's not just the same as the person who's taking care of your dog. And there are a lot of problems and things we need to be aware of. We have Rochelleen Maltese here. She works for Meowtel in the Brooklyn, New York City area. She's also a figure skater and a romance novelist. So I have questions about that, but we'll have to wait right back after word from the sponsor. Hey everybody, welcome back to 19 Cats and Counting. I am your co-host Linda Hall, here with my dwelling best friend and co-host Rita Reimers. We're making a bit of history here today. We are, we are making a bit of history, the yes. The difference in our re recording studio, if you will, is that Linda and I are actually in the same place. And if you're watching this on video, you see that. Yes. We're never in the same place. No, Linda normally there's Ohio. three screens, the Ohio screen, the South Carolina, and the guest. South Carolina. And here we are, and yes. here we are. My, for those of you keeping tally, still 19 still, still 19 19, and 19, and 19 still homing, 19 yes um those of you who have been following along um know that linda is now back to 11 yes she came home she's very happy my beloved kismet is home again yes but i'm oh, excited about Lord. our guests because as you know i've owned just for cats pet sitting for about 17 years yep uh sold the business to sonia pot cabbage yep meow tell yep uh, and Linda helped me run the business for the last four years as our executive director. Yep. We have a, a wonderful Meow Tell sitter here with us to talk about the ins and outs of pet yes, sitting. Yes, ma'am. What pet sitters wish you knew, cat sitters, before you left town and all yes, of that. Yes, and what you can do to make your cat more comfortable. Well, we'll get all into that. Welcome, Rachelene. Thank I'm you. so glad to see you. Thank you so much for doing this with us. Oh, we're so excited. Absolutely. I'm actually between cats right now. I had my morning shift. I have a dinner crew, so you catch me in the middle when I get That's a break. That's awesome. awesome. I remember Perfect. those days. I was a pet sitter up until probably the last year. Yeah. Yeah, I had to make her. It was like she was just running too crazy. And I'm like, you've got to stop sitting and just focus on the business. And then <laughs> we difficult. moved to behavior. That's but... one of the reasons I came back to South Carolina. I thought, because I started the business in LA. I thought if I'm not there, people can't request me, right? Um, so I could just run the business. <laughs> uh, yeah. And it then was, she started. Then here, we ended up starting yes, here. But yes. anyway, it, it's like, it's like an addiction, isn't it? You can't quit once you start. You fall in love with these little creatures. You really do. You really do have a relationship with them. And because I tend to specialize in cats that are difficult, mm -hmm. um, that gets me certain categories of cats. And some of them are cats with behavior issues, but I get a lot of super seniors and right. a lot of cats with medication. So it's very much situations where the pet parents, you know, only trust me with the cat or uh, the cat is 19 or 20 or 21 and you just don't want to introduce any changes. Yes. So there's always that thing where somebody will reach out and be like, can you squeeze me in? And I should say no, and I never do. <laughs> I know. We We've were the same that. way, and we had some sitters like Melanie when she worked for us. You know, she'd have, like at the holidays, she'd have 22, 23 sits, and then one of her special clients would come in. And she's like, I'd like, you know, you have the keys. We need to sign this to someone. No, I'll fit, you know. Margo I don't know was like did. that too. Margo was my from France, was, so we love. was 24. Dexter, Dexter sure, you're really being you know, helpful. Like uh, yes, Margo was from France, so we love making fun of her accent. But yes, we'd send her something and say, you know, because if one of your clients wrote to us to book, it's, you know, we got to offer this to you first. But we'd say, <laughs> we know you have 8,000 clients on that day, so we'll substitute out. And she'd always say, I will do, you know, and if you just like, <laughs> that's my do. favorite, I will do. Yes, there's some of these stick with us, but uh, you know, I was surprised when I started working for the company. I remember a cousin of mine, I told her what I was doing and she's like, for cats? People pay for that? They do not understand, right? Do people just think that you're going around playing with fluffy kittens all day? And it's great. I don't think they even think that. I think people who don't have cats think I just like go in, change the water, drop some food down and, leave. and get out. Like I, people who are not cat people do not understand how social they are yeah. as yes. animals. Yes. Um, and they don't oh. understand how smart and complex they are. And then if yes. you don't keep them busy, they're probably going to do something you don't want them to yeah. do. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> and we get some behavior calls like that too. Um, the most recent one we had, she has a Maine Coon. And the Maine Coon, you know, they're very intelligent, right? So a lot of the havoc she's wreaking is because she's bored. Yes. Yeah. I actually just had a Maine Coon client um, and the cat was very territorial. 
um, and the, the human client didn't really convey that to me in advance. Um, so I go to visit the cat, beautiful cat. We had a great meet and greet. I go to visit the cat. It's at night and I can't find the light switch in the apartment. Oh, like, such I a hate weird that. Thing that I didn't think to ask about. So I'm in the dark, stumbling around looking for the lights and this Maine Coon shoots out of nowhere claws my ankle <gasps> open and i'm just like okay this is super not her fault this is my <laughs> fault for not knowing where a light switch is but again you know knowing that certain breeds can be certain ways or that an individual can be a certain way it's like super important and Maine coons are gorgeous but they also need a lot of attention because you have to brush their coats if somebody's going away yeah. for a week or two weeks you can't just let them do whatever yeah. they're gonna do yeah that's true well that's true. and we've seen there was a there was a celebrity and I can't think of who it was. Um, uh, he was on Dancing with the Stars once, but anyway, he left his cat home and went on vacation and his cat turned the water faucet oh, on and yeah. flooded the apartment. I remember oh my that. God, that's like my worst nightmare. Like stove, stoves and water faucets. are. We just had a absolutely... sitter call us. She got in, the smell of gas was crazy. The cat had jumped up on the stove and flipped the switch. Gas is pouring into the apartment. She's you know, yep. got the cat, she's got the window open. She's holding the cat near the window. She's trying to fan <laughs> the place, get air in. And, and you know, and uh, we had a lot of clients in the LA area. And like when the wildfires started, one of our mm -hmm. sitters got to the house and there's a note on the door that this place is evacuated. And she called us and she's like, I'm taking this cat home, which is against our insurance, but duh, the cat can't stay there. So right. Four. the house is in danger. Yes. And we're like, she couldn't get them all. What yes. She do? Yes. We're like, get the cats. Like, is it okay if I bring my husband over and help? Yes. What go, do what you, you gotta do. That's been the most challenging, Rachelene. Um, I think there's, I think there's been like a, a range of things that have been difficult. Um, one of the things that's hard again is clients just need to tell me what's going on. And also no one actually knows how their cat's going to react to a sitter right that's now true. because we've all been home from COVID for so long. So I, you know, I joined Meow Tell at the end of 2019, had like a great three or four months. COVID happened. how you got uh -huh. into this. Yeah. We, everything stopped dead. And then once the vaccine started rolling out, mm -hmm. I've been busy since then the way I was busy at my first Christmas. Wow. Like every single weekend, Everyone's if I want to take get away. 10 cats, mm -hmm. I can take 10 cats. Like that's how busy it is. So, but the thing is, these cats have been in their homes with their owners 24 seven for like yes. a year and a half in some mm -hmm. cases. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I had one client um, two very sweet cats. One of them needed insulin. No problem. I have a lot of insulin cats. Most cats are super chill about it. Sure. Met the cats. The cats were totally fantastic. Client goes on holiday. The cat who needs the insulin has gone under the bed. If I walk into the room, it will start growling and screaming and hitting the underside of the bed. Because normally I just crawl under the bed Definite and get the cat. Right? Like, like the cat is not okay. Luckily, the people's flight got canceled. So they came back because their flight got delayed for a day. I went yeah. over again. We like worked out a strategy. Let's keep this door closed. Let's see what treat she likes. Like we came up with a whole strategy. They left again. The strategy worked, but that cat was super unhappy, super aggressive, didn't want her insulin shot. And that had nothing to do with me right. or the pet parents or sure. her. It had to do with, she literally hasn't been on her own or with strangers in 18 months. Yes. So that sort of stuff is really hard because one, you have to make sure the cat's medically okay. And two, you just want them to feel okay and mm -hmm. feel comfortable. And sometimes it's just not possible. And I think anybody who sits, and I'm sure you two know this, you know, it'll say, oh, this is a 20 minute visit. But sometimes you're just hanging out talking with that animal for an hour, either because it doesn't do what you need it to do, or because you're just like, you just want it to feel better. Yes, <laughs> you know? yeah, exactly. The minimum visit we would ever do was 30. And yeah. sometimes with those special cats and special situations, that wasn't enough. And we yeah. often stay longer. Yeah. Um, which, you know, if you've got a jam packed day, like on the holidays, it's really impossible. Yeah, good luck with that. I remember we had one client that had us do a bunch of tests sits because he was afraid his cat would react that way but very few clients understand that and would be willing to pay for that so what would you tell those clients who think their cat might be a problem how would you 
preemptively avoid that situation. The main thing that I've been asking clients to do now where we seem to think there's an issue is for mm -hmm. me to come over for the regular meet and greet and then me be just like, can you just pop outside to like go get a soda for like five minutes? Are you nice. just comfortable leaving me alone in uh -huh. your apartment so we can see what the cat thinks about me here when you're not immediately That's present. a great idea. That is a and great idea. And it reassures the cat because then their person comes back so quickly. Mm -hmm. I'm not seen as somebody who's like taking away their person. So I've started doing that. And it, at the very least, it gives me the information I need. That is so smart. Very yes. Smart. When you don't know how your cat's going to act, Catster had Rita and I uh, went with her and took part in I'm it. I'm just watching she had her do, uh, oh, she had her do some, they had her do some videos on cat behavior. And so we had to bring her some of her cats. And so we, we were like, Simon and Colby, number one, they are everybody's greeters. They are the oh. cats. They are going to be the superstars. Then we decided <laughs> to bring a third cat just in case. Me, I'm Simon and Colby, here. who are truly the greeters of new cats, new people. I come in the door, they're there, hello, you know, they're pushing everybody out of the way. They freaked out in a strange environment. Colby <laughs> was underneath the dresser. We thought she'd escaped. We looked for him. We looked for him for I don't know how long, you know. We thought we knew. And yeah. the third one that we took, he ended up being the star. He, he had it down. He let us do anything to him. But the other two were like, I'm out of here. Yeah. So you don't know how your cat's going to act when someone, when a change comes, when you're in a different environment or a different person comes in. Yeah. And the other thing that I find is in multi-cat yeah, households, to... often mm -hmm. they'll be like, oh, this is the shy cat. You won't see her. And the shy cat is the cat that's very social. I love that. Because the, gre the gregarious cat is actually just very attached to one of their humans exactly. and maybe more standoffish. Exactly. So the assumption that a sitter will experience what you experience with your animal, even if it's not negative, is just yes. never going to be true. It tends yes. to be different. Yes. Yes. Do we need to take a break before I ask a question? Are uh, we there? Yeah, we could take All a right. little break All early. Right. Let's break for a message from our sponsors and we'll be right back with more exciting cat sit stories and strategies. And we're back with 19 Cats and Counting, my co-host Linda Hall and our special guest, Rachelene. I wanted to ask you, you're in the New York City area, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, are you in the part of New York City that's densely populated, like you can walk to your sits or do you have to deal with New York traffic? Um, I do not even know how to drive because I've lived in New York my whole life. So yeah. I can walk to my sits. I try to keep everything between a one and three mile radius nice. so that I could walk in an emergency if mm -hmm. I had to, um, because we have a lot more extreme weather than we used to. And sure. I've had sits during blizzards and hurricanes and all sorts of things when the transit system has shut down. So one of the points that I always make to my clients is, I will be there regardless of what the MTA does because I can get there. Right. So. What a gift. Oh, I wish, have you ever thought about moving like to the Carolinas? Cause I intend to get out of the Ohio snow eventually <laughs> and I'm not going to New York and you need to be my cat sitter because I just love everything out of your mouth. But I don't um, know how to drive. So like, Oh, I that's right. Yeah, he here you will teach you. I will personally teach you how to drive, <laughs> take you for your lessons. Even yes. In, even in LA you have to drive, but we did have one sitter I was thinking he Adam. narrowed his territory so he could walk to everything because he and his wife sh were sharing a car. Yes. And that worked out, but for the most part, driving in that LA traffic was H-E double. Yeah, huh? Uh -huh. So at least you don't right. have to and deal you with you just don't that. know how to time things with LA traffic. Yeah. Whereas New yes. York, unless there's a crisis, it's pretty reliable that the trains will work. Um, but I do try to avoid trains if it's something that's very time sensitive because sure. some cats, their medication, oh, four hours, whatever. But I literally have cat clients that take like five pills and, and a liquid every single day of the rest wow. of their lives. And that's not a cat you want to be late to. Exactly. And yeah. I love that you said that you, um, that you work with uh, behaviorally challenged uh, <laughs> clients. Is, you know, we've seen that. And we had one cat, Sweet Pepper. Uh, Pepper loved her daddy, Pepper. but she had horrible anxiety she about anybody else. Pepper. And she was a spicy pepper. She was named correctly. She's a spice. And um, literally, and this doesn't sound good, but it was necessary. 
they had to leave a broom by the door so that when the sitter came in, they could get the door. And, you know, we weren't beating the cat, but sweeping right. that away from you because the cat was going to eat your face. We had a hard time and, finding a backup sitter for the regular sitter. So Nobody yes, Cyan was the only one that could take Pepper. And in fact, when we sold the business, Cyan did not go oh, over yeah, to yeah. Meow Tell. We were Pepper. like, you can keep Pepper. Because nobody would touch Pepper with a 10-foot pole, that poor thing. And it's not her fault. Right. She's got anxiety yeah. and she's scared to death. At, but the sitter's also well, didn't want to be Well, her dad is single because he can't bring a date home. I love her. I love her dad because, yes, he can't bring a date home, so he just doesn't. <laughs> He's giving so, up a social life. And giving up his life for the cat. Yes. Cat. Yes. I, I would say with most of mine, there's usually a strategy where, where we're not at the broom. But I do have a couple of clients where it doesn't matter if it's 90 degrees out. I wear jeans, so they can't get my ankles. Oh, yes. yes. Um, and I do tend to carry a big tote bag that I just will, like, put in front of my legs as I walk in. So if they're going to come at something... We used They're to tell sitters to do that. Yes. Me. Yes. Uh, you know, and I also ask clients if they tell me that their cat is difficult or might get aggressive. I'm like, well, what, what works? Cause sometimes it's just speak calmly. Sometimes it's move quickly and just get out. Sometimes it's oh, treats no. will work. Sometimes it's, well, she's quicker trained with me. So just keep making the clicker noise. Some of them, you know, water, a spray bottle, super easy. Some, it'll make them more angry. So I just, I have to ask those questions, but I have to know I need to ask those you questions. You have people that make you use a spray bottle? That's so bad. <laughs> From a behavioral <laughs> standpoint. That yeah. Because yeah. it just makes the cat angrier. But so occasionally I do have that. Um, but really, you know, I actually have a difficult one later today and she's clicker trained. She just doesn't like anyone but her people. Sure. But if I go in and I click and I give her treats, it keeps her busy enough sure. that while I have to be on my toes, it's fine. Yes. And I, I think people think that cats either can't be trained. Yeah. Or that difficult cats can't be trained. But if you have a difficult cat and can train it, even if it only responds to you, it gives us something to work with as a sitter. Sure. Yes. And I had I had a client that I would sit here in the Carolinas, and he had been a neighborhood cat. Somebody had kicked out, and then the people moved here from Connecticut. I think they brought the cat. The wife was afraid of TJ. I was the only one who could handle TJ, but I learned I had to walk slow because if I walked too fast, he would grab my ankles. So we think somebody kicked him or something. Mm -hmm. and they told me don't take your shoes off in the house because he will attack your feet. So. It, I always take my shoes off when I do a pet sit, just so I don't mm -hmm. talk. had to go against that natural tendency and keep my shoes on. So yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I always then... ask on meet and greets. I'm like, do, would you like me to take my shoes off? Because yeah. it's not a very consistent value in New York, and it's actually a really good way to find out if the cat's going to go for my feet. True. <laughs> well, and that's what I wanted to bring up. You said when we were emailing back and forth and talking about getting you on here, you said, I wish people would warn me about behavior issues. And you were very understanding about why people don't. And I get it. If I was Pepper's mama, like, do I want to say, hi, Rosaline, I'd really like you to come sit. By the way, Pepper is, you know, behaves like demon spawn for anyone but me and will try to eat your face. So what time will you be here? Right? Like, I don't want to do this, but I'm crippling you and I am ruining mm -hmm. your chances of having a positive experience with my cat if I don't warn you ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So I love, so what we, I want your list of what, um, I, I, I'm, I've got cats. Actually, I have 11. Are you ready? Uh, she's got 19. That's amazing. A better choice than her. But uh, don't, yeah. try this at home. don't try this at home. But um, so, you know, I'm going to have you come sit for me. What do you want me to do? Tell you? How do I prepare? What sets up the best possible scenario for you coming into my house? Um, one of the best things is to try to be organized. Like the way that we care for our pets, we don't really think about it. But I need somebody who's going to explain to me where the litter is, where the food is, and you know what the cat needs. And a lot of people haven't thought through how to tell another person that sure. until um, I arrive. And that can be chaotic. And even though I take notes, it can be very difficult to make sure I know what the cat needs and the order the cat needs it. Um, I always want to know how the cat relates to food because some cats have a lot of food aggression. Sure. In that case, I need to prepare the meal on the counter and put the meal down versus just and you know putting the food in the bowl where the cat eats because the cat may get aggressive with me there or be unhappy. So those are two things I need to Very know. Good. I also need to know if the cat 
tends to eat very fast and then throw up because mm -hmm. I want to know that that's like a totally ordinary thing that I don't need to bother them about if it happens because if their mm -hmm. cat is a cat that never does that that's also a question um, and then any sort of aggression or territorialness um, and for some cats that's the apartment is the territory yeah it's going to feel challenged by anyone but sometimes that's oh, this cat isn't aggressive unless you look it right in the eye. You know, and some cats love eye contact and some cats freak Long out at eye contact. And yes, and yeah, we, we try to tell people, stare yeah, into their eyes. staring at a cat in the eyes is a predator behavior. So you gotta, you right. gotta blink and yeah. But some will not even take the blink. They're okay. like, your face is in my direction, no, right? Oh, look so, at me. I love those so, cats that love you right away. Yeah, so there's stuff like that. And then there's also things where, you know, I have a lot of cats that take medication and I'm very good at pulling a cat. But occasionally somebody will say something like, oh, this cat's so easy to pill. He uh -huh. loves when you turn the water on in the bathroom sink and he leaps up on the bathroom sink and you can just give him a pill. And I actually took that advice the first time from this client, but I don't know this cat. He's a very gentle, totally lovely cat but I still don't like know how his mouth works and how he reacts to me. I fumble the pill, it lands in the sink and dissolve. Uh -huh. Nobody needs that. Right. So, you know, just the sense of, okay, how do you pill the cat? Yes. Why do you pill the cat this way? Because right. it can be, I tried this other method and it went wrong, in which case I will not try that method. Or it can be, oh, it's just what works for us, which may not be what works for me in that That's cat. True. Yes. And very important that they tell you that we had a lot of um, uh, insulin, any kind of needle med cats that the people are like, no, I feed him wet food. And while he's eating, I stab him in the rump yeah. and he has no idea. And he just that's misses it all. And yeah. And so that's really important to know because if a sitter, you know, who's very experienced in insulin has been doing it for 20 years or whatever, comes and picks the cat up and tries to do a needle med, right. they might have a real problem on their hands. Like, this is not how it's done, honey. You know, Wait, yeah. how I've done every other cat, probably do my cats, but that's not necessarily going to work for I that cat. I have an insulin cat problem, Otto. And this gal, she didn't warn me because he was fine at the meeting, right? The meet and greet. Mm -hmm. And she didn't warn me. I even was able to give him a shot. When she was gone, he became a totally different, very aggressive, meet me at the door, snarling, look like a bulldog kind of cat. I could not give the shot. And I told her, when, when you get back, I can't sit for him anymore. Cause I, and she started bawling because she'd been through so many. Mm -hmm. so, long story short, we, what we ended up doing was for a while, we put this cat on a pill type of insulin, which is not as good, but only right. when I sat. So I, got, I put it in the tree and he ate it got used to him letting me pet him and, you know, love him that way, you know, as he got to know me. Right. And eventually I was able to switch to shots. So yeah. if, a, if an owner is honest at first, you can find ways to work around and solve a problem if they're willing yes. to work with you. Yeah, you need to yeah, be Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Um, and, you know, medication is serious. And then the other thing I always ask with meds, and I've never really had a fail with getting a med in a cat, but I've had some that have come close so I'm always like, fails. so I'm like, is this med a matter of life and life death, and death. Mm -hmm. you know, or is this med um, a low key maintenance thing? And if the cat can't, if we can't do it, is it better to let it go? So I always yes. want to know what level of urgency I'm at because mm -hmm. I don't necessarily want to stress a cat out over something that is not incredibly essential. Yes. If the yes. cat is yes. freaking out, yes. if it's insulin, we get it done because it needs to get done. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. That's well, the big I think, fear. In my opinion, probably the hardest type of medication to give a cat is subcutaneous fluids. Do you do a lot of that? I, I use I to, only, it can be I difficult. only have one or two and in both cases they're cats I I had worked with for a long time before good. they needed fluids. Oh well that's so good. That makes it's a difference. Been a very easy transition good um i haven't actually had one where it was like first time that's what's happening well, yeah take a cat you don't know and unless it's a super cuddly i'm gonna sit in your lap and love you which we both have those cats but we've also got Great. the other cats and you've got to hold them still long enough it's not like an insulin one and done you gotta hold them while that bag goes in and yeah we had one that we had one client that would um, request two sitters come to do the sub q because he knew his cat wasn't going to be i mean once i got him into position but she squirmed a lot. There was no way one sitter could hold. So he was willing to pay the extra sitter fee to have two come. When you're not available, do you have a, a backup that you work with that you back up each other? 
I do. Um, there's um, another Meowtel sitter named Caitlin, who um, I just moved to the neighborhood I'm in now. Oh. And she just moved from this neighborhood to my old neighborhood. Oh, how fast so we've is that? Been you switch client lists. We've been switching oh, clients that we can bear to part with. And we've yeah. been backing each other up when there's holidays or whatever. That's so that's smart. been going really, really well um, and smart. has been fantastic um and then we usually have intel on each other's clients um and stuff like that um yes. and i've actually sat for her cats when she's been away also That's good. So awesome. we sit for each other so it's you know we know we can recommend each other because we know how we've treated each other's animals well and that's good you know, too we always like to pair we started doing that kind of towards the end pair up so that you know and send two to a meet and greet especially if it was a long one like we had client at la we've got people in the industry three. who are going away for three months and right. I can't guarantee you that Rochelle will be able to come every day for three months. She might get sick. She might have an emergency. She might have a family member problem. You don't know. So we always tried to have somebody that, God forbid, something all of a sudden happened. It's like, it's okay. You already met so-and-so well, and she'll be in there. LA, almost everybody's trying to get into showbiz. So if you get your big break, you better have a backup. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Time to go. And, it's time to go. Here, you know, I have had clients who've been away for like three weeks sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and the other thing that I'm mindful of, you know, you mentioned this in passing, um, I'm a figure skater and nice. I have gotten seriously hurt skating a couple times oh, and yeah. I need to have cat clients at those times. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Kevin. I do go to the rink, I skate for a bit and then I like go see a cat and God forbid it's one of the times I get hurt. No. You know, somebody would have to step in because I can't go see a cat, you know, 20 minutes after I've broken my wrist, which yes. I have in fact done. So, you know. <laughs> I always wanted to ice skate. I was a roller skater as a kid, but I've never ice skated in my life, but I'm, I'm just I'm too afraid. And I love watching. It's the only thing in the Olympics I watch. I love figure skating. I'm obsessed. It's, it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it's I would so love. Hard. But, it's oh, so hard. It's so hard. And I'm <laughs> sure I, I would do break. This as a kid. Yeah, I started this as an adult at 46. Um, wow. Yeah. So wow. I've been I've been skating for three years now. I'm sorry. Did so, she look 46 to you now? I'm yeah. 49 now, but um, I thought you're like 30, 32. Yeah. No. So so, but skating is it's the New York cold. I'm telling you, it is the it's cold. cold. Yeah, it's the cold, and it's the fact that we walk everywhere. Yeah, you know? that's like true. We, we get exercise whether we want to or not. True, that's true, true. Here, true. I, I live in the middle of nowhere. I can't walk to a store or anything. Well, there's no sidewalks or anything. You, you take no, your right and your own hand walking out. Yeah, walks. exactly. It's a little cold <laughs> back in the back and with woods. And yeah, I wouldn't do it. But uh, how did yeah. you? How, I have just a couple of questions. How did you first get involved in cat sitting? Did you have another career that you did? How did you do it? I have been working um, as a freelance writer for years and years and years now. Mm -hmm. um, and I also um, write fiction. I'm a romance novelist and I have oh, a co-writer nice. who lives in upstate New York. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you write freelance, when you write novels, the ebb and flow of income is really out of whack. We know that. Yeah. And I had just taken up figure skating, which is an incredibly expensive sport. And I said to myself, okay, if I'm going to do this, I need an income stream just to pay for skating. Sure. And I'm not a dog person. I didn't grow up with dogs. I don't know how they work. I totally know everything about cats. Yeah, don't get we're dogs. the same. So I was sort of like, oh, well, maybe I could do pet sitting. And I was looking at Rover, which is very dog focused. Yes. And I was just Look like- the name, Rover. Yeah. Right. And it didn't seem like a good fit. And then like, I don't know, in a Google or something, Meowtel came up. I was like, well, this looks like it might work. Um, and then I signed up and went through the whole interview process, which is actually pretty lengthy. It is. Um, and I had started in like September. So I got in right before that holiday rush. And I was like, this is crazy money and way more fun than anything else I'm doing right? right to make money um so it pays so far beyond what I needed to pay for figure skating and figure skating is a again horrifically expensive sport like what people pay for rent in other cities is what I spend skating oh my goodness yeah um, yeah, it, yeah but no it's like it, having a second house or something like having a mortgage it, yeah, it it absolutely is. And also at that period of time, we were starting to think about buying a house and whatever. So Meowtel was just like the right thing at the right time. Um, I love cats and I also really love people. And I don't think most people understand how much of what I do involves reassuring the humans. Like the cats and I are fine, but the humans 
haven't been away, they're nervous, they have mm -hmm. someone in their space, they don't know what their cat's going to do. Everyone has a different sense of humor. Everybody has a different level of anxiety. Like I have to be a different person for yes. every client. With the cats, I can be very consistent and then we just figure out how it works. But with people, like some people want to hear that every time I photograph their cat, he looks like he's walking away from an explosion and is <laughs> like a master criminal. And some people just want to know that he's good and sweet and fluffy and like ate all his food. And some want intense details about what's happening in the litter box. And some people just want to know I cleaned it. And send and pictures of, of it clean and send pictures of the bowl and how much he ate and yeah we've been there yeah. so have. all of that and all of that sort of navigating people um and what they need is yes. is super interesting and i also think that in new york city we mostly live in very small spaces that's true um, we often have shared situations so i'll sit for cats where there's a roommate but the roommate is not and roommates home we've done some of that not, in la yeah yeah, yeah, but the roommate isn't primarily responsible for the cat or, or the cat um, takes chemotherapy pills. So it's just very important that that doesn't become the roommate's, you know, mm -hmm. burden yes. there. Um, so just things like that. So I am in spaces that are small and cramped that we all have feelings about, you know, because of what real estate is here. So there's a lot of building trust with people. Um, yes. as well as cats. Also, yes. people hire me when they're home. I've had people hire me because they work at home and they have kittens and they have an important meeting. They're like, please play with the kittens so I don't like totally mess up this job interview because they're yes. screaming outside my bedroom door. Yes. Um, I had somebody else who was pilling her cat for the first time and couldn't do it. And then the cat crawled inside her couch and we oh. had to, so I had to go over and flip her couch over and and the cat was still in her couch and then she said to me well i'm not really upset because we're replacing the couch soon i'm like how soon are you replacing the couch she's like oh like in three days i'm like do you care if we like cut the couch open surgery we actually cut her couch open oh my to god get the cat out what you have to do <laughs> right you imagine if that had been the new sofa the cat was in right right Right, exactly. Yes. So uh, there, there are a lot of times where I am actually having a great deal of interaction with the owner. And, and then because I do work with yeah. super seniors and ill cats, um, I do have a lot of clients that have experienced bereavement with their cats. I do have a lot of cat clients that have passed away. And that's very hard. And yeah, many true. people you know, have multiple cats. So I am continuing to see their remaining cats and deal with them. But you have to really sort of find a way um, yeah. to do that. What I try to do is I bundle photo, because I don't send them all the photos I take of cats, because you get like blurry photos, bad photos. Right. Yeah, yeah. But I bundle all the photos of the deceased cat onto a drive, and then I'll pass that on, because um, I usually have extras. I've, they done, have I've done that for That's so energy. sweet. See, and I wish our sitters had been, the hardest thing we had when we were bringing sitters on board, we, we, were, a little diff we were a little different than Meowtel, um, but we, they were still, still independent contractors. But the hardest mm -hmm. thing was them understanding that it's a people business. Uh, the minute mm -hmm. we had somebody apply that said they want to do this because they don't like people, we didn't interview them because right. it is such an important component. And most of what you do is reassuring the human that, yeah, you can go on vacation. Yes, it's okay to leave your cat and he's going to be fine. And they're nervous. Right. And, and I'll tell you, I... So Reed and I went to a pet sitting conference one year in uh, Virginia, close to Washington, D.C. area. We were both places. And um, I remember sitting at dinner with her and all of a sudden she's, stop. Barb should have been there by now. I haven't gotten any pictures. And <laughs> when she finally got those pictures, everything changed. And she's like, oh, look. And, well, at that oh, point, I think I had 17. Yeah. And oh, look, this one's loving on her. That never, ha oh my gosh, look. And then we could eat dinner and enjoy the rest of our night and do whatever we were going to do and sightsee and have a blast. Until those pictures came through, she's just on edge. Like, I don't even think she's eating. That's what I'm like. My partner is very chill about it when we travel. But I'm like, yesterday I got the pictures at one. It's four. I don't have the pictures. And it's fine because, like, my cats are very low maintenance, um, both personality-wise and medically. So 
I, I'm, I'm always like, yeah, just come when you can come. But I still start to get crazy about it. Yes, yeah. yes. I didn't get photos of all the cats because there's some of mine that, like, Brownie would never show up for anyone. Well, yeah. I don't know if you'll even see Brownie. Yeah, I saw Brownie on the bed oh, last night, but that's oh, it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he was on the bed last night. She was on the bed last night. But yeah. So I know a... we're going a little over time, but yes. that's okay. We can talk to you for days. I'm I telling know. you, this is, <laughs> I yeah. I want to give you, like, an opportunity to say, like, if you could really tell a client the best way, the best setup to leave for you, because I've been into houses with no toilet paper, no paper towels, no scoopy bags, no litter. Uh huh. Do you have a checklist or if in your dreams, would you have a checklist to say, these are the things I really need to, to leave for me? What would, you, what would be on that list? I really like just a very detailed instruction sheet. I don't care I do if too. it's a printout. I don't care if it's an email. There's forms on Meowtel to do that. Just mm -hmm. people actually filling out that information nice. is incredibly handy. I also want to know what their key situation is. Do I have the only duplicate or is someone else around if something goes wrong? Keys because are the I've bane had... of our existence. Yeah, because even if everyone does everything right, things still happen. Oh, we Maybe. had a sitter, yeah, we had a sitter pull the door shut, didn't realize it locked behind her. And she's like, okay, so my purse is in there, the key's in there, and I can't get back in to take care of the cat. So we had to call the client on vacation. No, there's no duplicate key. That. We had to call a locksmith. Yeah. And yeah, that was so not I fun. I want to know what level of key jeopardy I'm in. Um, also, you know, it's great to keep everything the same for the cat in terms of where their feeding station is yeah. or whatever. But if it's in a very tight space, if it's somewhere where the cat could feel cornered, if I'm doing something, you know, the person should consider moving it a few days before they travel. So the cat right. gets used to a new location and that gives me and the cat more breathing room. So everybody's a lot more comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, leaving food out invisible, let me know where the litter is. Um, have plastic bags. In New York, we used to get plastic bags every time we oh, went to yeah. a bodega. You gotta pay for them a now. Right. right. No, you can't, you can't even get them. There's a oh, ban. You're kidding. In LA, you, you can only get paper. Wow. So it used to be that in every house, I just went under the sink. You knew there were plastic bags. So now I carry the little doggy do bags everywhere. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's smart. But in general, if clients have those and are prepared with those, because we all don't have bags the way we used to, which is, you know, sort of hilarious. Mm -hmm. Also, I want to know where your dustpan is. I want to know where your paper towels are. Because even if your cat does nothing gross and is completely perfect, they will kick litter somewhere. Sure. I've been so, in houses where there's a broom and no dustpan. Right? Yes. I put this in, Sometimes yes. I wipe a paper towel and scoop up the, you know. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so allergies, too. I think that was a big one. You know, sitters liked if the cat didn't have treats or something, sitters to warm up to the cat would want to bring treats and things. And then we no, find out, oh, no, my cat's you allergic to temptations. Right, exactly. So let us know what we can do and what we can't do and what's, yeah. The other thing, and that's also true with toys, because, you know, there's like those video, like, watch the mice things that are online. Yeah. And I made a mistake once that I played it for a cat I had seen multiple times, and we had a great relationship, and I thought she'd be totally into it. She lives on the top floor. There's a skylight. And she heard the little noises from my phone and she thought like birds were trying to break into that apartment or something. And she was climbing the furniture, which I'd never seen her do and staring at the ceiling, screaming for like 10 minutes oh. after I turned it off. And I was like, I'm so, so oddly enough, also a cat named Pepper. I'm like, Pepper, I'm so sorry. <laughs> All spicy peppers. Peppers. <laughs> but I That's always triple funny. check with clients about what is your cat like? What is your cat not like? Is it okay if I try something new with your cat or do you not want me to do that? Because sometimes it can provoke a reaction that, you know, I'm Pepper's fine. She's recovered. She no longer thinks birds are breaking into her house, but she had 10 minutes that weren't super fun and I feel bad about it. So I do get it. Shepherd clients yeah. about We're going to have like to that. think about that. I, Some of our behavior clients, we recommend well, that they run those. That doesn't have the sound. So I, I like, um, and we had the owner on our show. Oh, I like true. relax my cat. It, you can put it on YouTube. So I, I like mm -hmm. to put it on my TV and especially if I'm going to be leaving, if I know something stressful, if I really mm -hmm. need to focus on work and I need these cats to watch something else. So it has relaxing cat music and, video of birds and fish aquarium relax and they love it because there's YouTube or relax my cat .com. yes Just that's awesome because i have a client who in the name of relaxing his cat asks me to play office marathons from netflix we put the office on and the cats oh watch gosh. the office all day that's and not hilarious. other tv shows specifically <laughs> the office i don't know why but that's what they, they love it. Yeah, they have a 24-7 live thing on that YouTube. There are subscription ones, too. I just run the free one, and it's fine. But That's so awesome. I, I found a 
look alike. It wasn't Relax My Cat. It was another right. one. And I put it on. I thought, well, let's try this. It had chipmunks on it and Shadow saw it. And all of a sudden leaped up and slammed into my tongue. And I'm like, what's happening? I wanted that chipmunk. So I was like, we're going back to relax my cat now. <laughs> we're, not, we're putting those yeah, chipmunks on again. You have no again. idea. You just have no idea. So <laughs> test it out. Yes. There's yes. Also, if, if any of your clients have a Echo Dot um, mm -hmm. music for cats, it's by David Ty, who's a symphonic cellist. If you just say, um, I can't. Oh, I say she's, she's on. You just say Alexa, play music for cats by David Ty. She'll play, and it's very relaxing. It's, yes, it's nothing that that you would dance to or anything. And it's kind of some of the sounds are strange. You hear some purring and meowing every now and then. Right, it works. It but really he looked into the science life. behind what tones, because you know they don't like some tones where they like others. Right, like relax them. And when I had to integrate my daughter's four with my seven to get to eleven, uh, I would have my Alexa in the living room, in the dining room, and the kitchen playing. David Ties music all night long to keep everybody chilled out. That's <laughs> awesome. That's hilarious. But I haven't there actually is. taken Sounds that like approach. I'm a integrating bottle. a cat now. Sounds so. like she might need a bottle of convivial. Yeah, and a bottle of convivial. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll have to talk about that. Yeah. We have to wrap but, up. Unfortunately, we're like way over time. I know. We would love to have you back on and tell people what part of New York City you do and how they can find you. Sure thing. Um, they can find me on Meowtow. I'm under um, finicky felines um, because I do I do deal with the slightly challenging cats. Right. Um, I mostly serve um, Crown Heights and Bed Stuy now, but I do also take clients um, in Park Slope and Gowanus. Wonderful. Uh, that's, that's amazing. Great. Oh, we. We love and respect anybody who loves cats and does cats and these people do not understand how difficult of a job, rewarding it's and wonderful, job, but difficult. But as going after the behaviorally challenged and those super <laughs> seniors, <laughs> the ones we who love you. It. Yes, yes ma'am. Hardest to find sitters for, and this you know, is, people should be able to take vacations. That's what Rita said. Now that she's got her sitter, doesn't do uh, needle meds, and she just adopted a cat no, that was. Anywhere. 15 and needs insulin twice a day and the owner couldn't handle it anymore so, so she took him in that's to why she has 19 cats CBA. we're gonna have to so, teach her daughter nikki and she'll come help yeah her. yeah yeah and she's so like well videos. i guess i'm not coming to ohio to see you ever <laughs> <laughs> Here, we're gonna do some videos on uh, teach people how to do insulin shots sub-q fluids i've got one cat that needs an antibiotic shot and one B12. that gets b12 so we're going to record all those if people awesome i have a cat that gets them. an inhaler that's also been a super interesting discovery but he's super good about it that's awesome that was something that really exploded when we had just for cats yeah. when i first started in nobody had and then all of a sudden somebody had and i was like there's an inhaler for cats and by the time we sold to meowtel we had a bunch of cats yeah, that needed inhalers I, bl I blamed it on la's smog but yeah, new but there, york but isn't any yeah started getting them here yeah, 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 true. Well, yeah. I hate to cut us so, off. All right, yes. Right okay. Over, but, Rachelene, I wanted to, from the benefit of my 17 years of experience as a pet sitter, make sure you build in some time for you so you don't burn yourself out. It's this is a business true. with a high turnover and burnout rate if you don't plan for it. Yes. It, it, yes. it, is, it is super true. This year is, again, because of COVID, the first year I'm taking vacation. So yeah. that's good girl. Really nice. You have to. Yes. Good you really girl. Do. You really do. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Um, Absolutely. We'd love to have you back on again, maybe after the holidays. You can tell us how you fared over the holidays. Okay. I'm, I'm excited because this is the first real holiday I'm going to have in all these years. We're so excited. Congratulations. That yeah. is We're very so exciting. excited. Too. Yeah. She's actually going to put up a tree this year. I'm so excited. I can't stand it. <laughs> I might even go to church on Christmas Eve. Oh, no. <laughs> We're going to actually end up going another 10 minutes over. All right. All right. Yeah. So, Mark's going to kill us. This is so fun doing this in person, Linda, but I think the danger is we could probably talk all we day. Can, yeah, huh? um, sure and Mark Winter, I always have to thank our awesome producer who gave us this spot on Pet Life Radio. Yes. He always such, does such a great job editing these for us. Thank you so much. And never forget, it's not just Saturday, but every day's counter day. We'll see you next time.